Hello, I'm Dr. Catherine Horton. I would like to give you uh, a guide, a simple and easy to understand guide, how to make your own cord bundle. And um, I'm tailoring this specifically towards the cases of the victims of the secret services around the world. I would also like to emph emphasize that this is not legal advice. I am a PhD in particle physics, not in law. But I am in the unfortunate position that, like all the other victims as well, I have been shunned by many lawyers in three jurisdictions. And um, I am desperate to bring my case uh, to court because I am being mutilated and machine gunned by the secret services, even as I'm making this video. So I really understand how desperate most victims are. And I have um, a little bit to say about courts for two reasons. Number one, it's because I spent a lot of time observing courts as I was studying complex human systems at Oxford. And um, subsequently, I spent a lot of time uh, watching court cases on the UK Supreme Court's uh, live stream over the internet, studying how courts worked, how judges interfaced with the material um, and worked with the material, etc. And um, the other uh, little bit of insight I, I gained when in 2016, I was trying to get an emergency injunction against British intelligence from the High Court in London. And uh, what I observed in that uh, case uh, was shocking, I have to say. Um, so two judges were very good. The third one managed to shock me to the core. And um, I also was extremely uh, disconcerted by what I saw from lawyers. So I have spoken to many lawyers. I'm also supporting court cases and I'm interfacing with people's lawyers. And I have to say, uh, across the board, um, I'm less than impressed. So this is how the situation arises that many victims find themselves um, having been left totally alone by police, by doctors, but also by lawyers. And they find out that they have to do everything themselves. You know, you have to do your own police investigation, your own forensics. You have to become your own personal doctor and figure out what the intelligence agencies have done to you. And I'm sorry to say you'll also have to become your own lawyer. However, uh, don't despair um, because it's actually it can be broken down into simple steps that you can follow. And one of the things that I have learned watching all these lawyers is that they are really not that impressive. Much the contrary, in fact. And um, when you have a case uh, like this typical victim of the intelligence agencies, you might have been stalked and harassed and implanted and tortured and nearly killed several times over a period stretching many years. And no one can possibly understand your case as well as you can. So making your own court bundle is going to be extremely empowering and it will uh, you know, keep a very, very uh, close uh, leash on the lawyers that you might hire later on. And also by doing that, you learn how to present evidence and you learn what is really annoying work, working with these bundles and what you can avoid and maybe do better. So I encourage you to um, do it with me. I plan to again appear uh, pro se, meaning representing myself before a judge, because the truth is I do not trust a lawyer further than I can throw one. And not least because my main stalker happened to be a high flying barrister who became a Supreme Court judge subsequently. So no one has to explain to me the depths of corruption and depravity that is going on in the courts because I've seen it with my own eyes. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, even that aside, even if you haven't been uh, stalked and, uh, you know, harassed and uh, heck knows what else by a lawyer, you still shouldn't trust them. You really shouldn't. And uh, one of the, th the reasons is, uh, you know, factual. Your case is going to be so vast and so overwhelming that most lawyers do not have the required time to really work themselves into your case. And unless they are flat out brilliant, which very few of them are, like everywhere in the population, you know, they will not be able to do your case justice. And then there are other reasons. There are psychological reasons. If you're going up against the secret services, uh, we all have observed this effect that suddenly doctors and police officers and also lawyers suddenly get scared and they would rather side with, uh, you know, the other party 
against you than to actually stand up against the most powerful criminal organization on the planet, which is to some extent understandable, you know, especially because they also have family and children. And by reading your case, they know exactly what happens when you are being attacked by the secret services. So they are very unlikely to want to run that risk, you know. Um, but then also there's a third, uh, you know, much higher level uh, of reason behind all this. And that is because it just so happens to be the case that the Bar Association is an ancient organization that appears to have been in the business of barring people from uh, real justice and from ever going up against the crime cartel. Uh, I suspect that's why they are called the Bar Association, because frankly, there's no other reason. And um, also there are other secret and semi-secret organizations that judges are sometimes, judges and barristers are both forced to become members. And there is even a uh, mention of this in the Irish Parliament and there's a YouTube video about an Irish parliamentarian complaining about the fact that, um, you know, the, um, I, I forget what it's called, maybe the King's Bench or something like that. But uh, <clears throat> there are certain organizations uh, around the world that have been trying to car cartelize, you know, turn, turn uh, the legal practice into a cartel, and it's not for your benefit. It's uh, to make as much money as possible of vulnerable people, okay? And that is the sad reality. So we are now in this phase where we're trying to reclaim justice, we're trying to make it work again, and we're trying to... Uh, out these secret organizations and really get them out of our legal systems once and for all. So the last thing that you should do is go up to a member of these potential secret organizations and pay him a lot of money if you can help it. You know, that would be counterproductive. So really, if anything, you should um, not give them a penny and try to do it on your own. Now, there are some aspects where you might want to have legal advice, and um, I'm desperately trying to find ways how to make that cheaper and actually help many people with the same legal advice. Um, and this is what I'm working on. And as we are going forward here, and um, as we are working on these many victim cases, we will each learn what's important and how to do it best, and we'll share it, and we'll learn from each other. So that's the plan. So today I would like to open this, and I would like to show you how how to make a court bundle. Although I do not claim to be the field expert in making court bundles, I do not have a legal practice, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a physicist and the only thing I can bring to the table is the no bullshit approach of a physicist. And that's what I'll try to do. So I have tried to come up with a very uh, easy to use uh, platform that you can use, a very easy um, way to make these bundles. And I'm trying to explain to you uh, how that is done. And I want you to know that that is precisely what I'm, do, I'm using myself, okay? So um, if you are adopting this platform as we're going forward, um, you will be doing exactly what I'm doing. Any questions that you have, I might be able to answer. Other people following um, in my footsteps might be able to answer in the live chats and so on. So this is the idea, okay? So here we go. Uh, first of all, let me explain, you know, what I mean by a bundle, because there are different definitions. In one definition, a bundle is the sum total of all the documents and all the folders that are used in one court case. Okay, that is a bundle. So you would have a bundle for this court case containing all your pleadings and evidence and documents and correspondence and whatnot, okay? There's an other uh, definition of bundle and that means it is just one ring binder. So the difference is if we say that these uh, ring binders here are all the documents for one particular legal case, a bundle can sometimes mean making a bundle can sometimes mean making the whole lot or making a bundle, you know, making, for example, the evidence bundle could mean making just one of these ring binders, okay? And you have to kind of watch out what people mean. So the plat platform that we are using or that I'm proposing that we use will define bundle to be the entire lot together. A bundle is the entire set of documents for court case stretching um, several ring binders. What I prefer to use is the more intuitive um, definition, which is a bundle is uh, just one ring binder, okay? 
So that's the difference. And in my definition, I will talk about the say the core bundle, the evidence bundle, and so on. Okay. And you in your mind, I want you to picture one ring binder for each. Okay. So say the top one is the core bundle, this is the evidence bundle, and there might be two other bundles, you know, for I don't know what, references and, and other stuff. Okay. So this is how I'm going to use it because it's very intuitive, you know, one bundle is a bundle and collection of papers. Okay, now I also would like to point you to where you can find this information that I'm going to present today and where you will be able to find in future further information as we're moving forward. So please go to my website called stop007.org and then scroll down and right now you're seeing the current version of the website and it's sometimes you know these fields are changing and moving around but if you go down here to court cases this contains my court case in 2016 all the court documents um, that were used are uh, you know the transcripts and the court documents it contains other court cases and this is where I put all the stuff uh, related to how you can make your court case okay so please click click on court cases and there you will see the entire list okay so here for example this is this one here's my case that's another case in the UK against um, MI5 and so on and there are other cases in other countries but the very first one here is um, making court bundles okay so click on that and um, this is the introduction so everything that I'm saying here um, you can find um, explained and also the video that I'm now shooting will go right up here okay so you will find it and you can click on it and listen to everything I say again on this website but later on I'm pointing you to this uh, resource because later on I'll be adding other bits okay and other videos so um, you know you've, you're just seeing the website as it was just generated but there will be more content to come okay so now let's get on to how to make a court bundle. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can sit down and make every single one of these ring binders by hand yourself by, um, you know, putting in all the PDF documents and so on. But very quickly you will run into um, problems and that's because you have to not just, uh, you know, make one set of folders but you have to make copies of these folders because the judge needs a copy, you need a copy and the respondents need a copy as well. And if you have many parties involved and there are maybe two sets or three sets of respondents, they each need a copy. Okay, so this is, you know, very quickly you realize if you just sat down and did all the photocopying and filing yourself, uh, you would end up uh, getting stuff out of order or you might miss documents and so on. And add to that the fact that a lot of courts require you, for very good reason, they require you to have a pagination, as in a page number, that goes through the entire case, the entire total bundle collection, consecutively. So, for example, the UK High Court expects that you will put on a page number on each page and um, you know while every single set of documents might have individual page numbering, say, you know, an email or a document has four pages so it would go from page one to four they want you to put um, one set of numbering on top of all the documents that will be going from one to I don't know what 280 you know or uh, 345 whatever but it has to be you know one page after the other has to have um, you know consecutive numbers now the reason for that and the reason why I suspect specifically English courts have you know enforcing this rule based on what I personally have experienced and how much dodgy shenanigans is happening within the Royal Courts of Justice in London one reason could be that this way no one can actually nick pages and make them disappear okay so if they are all consecutively numbered no one could sneak in at night into um, you know a legal chambers and you know a barrister's uh, room and remove uh, certain documents from all the copies from the copy for the judge the original and the copy for the defendants you know so because it would show up suddenly the page numbering would have a you know something missing and it would be obvious and based on you know what I've seen in the courts I tell you especially if you're going up against the intelligence agencies it's not just not beyond them making documents disappear it's actually what they do as a day job 
So most of us have experienced the disappearance or maybe reappearance or even the modification of emails. And I tell you that's their daily bread and butter. They are in the business of sabotage. So you have to have a system that is resilient against sabotage. Now, when you when you have to do the page numbering yourself by hand, as you are adding documents later, it will involve a lot of tipexing, a lot of errors, and it will just lead to headaches, anger, and frustration. So to avoid that, what many lawyers do is that they use a professional platform these days. And I have um, looked around, and there's one I have selected, and this one is called Bundle Docs. Okay, I'm also linking um, it from the website. So if you're going on to my website here, uh, you can click on this image or you can click on the link and it takes you straight there. Okay, now one of the things I would like to say about Bundle Docs, and I've highlighted it here on the image, is that first of all, it is very easy to use. It's really true, bundles made easy that much uh, they keep their promise. Second of all, it is very cheap. It does come with a subscription and um, to make one court case and maintain all the files whereby there's no limit on the file size. I've asked them. You can make your bundle, you can, you can have 3,000 pages, you know, they will deal with that. And also they back it up, I think weekly certainly, you know. So they can't make your, your uh, work disappear and should there be any problem you can always call them and restore um, documents, okay? But in any case you should have backup copies. But the other thing that's also great about Bundle Docs is that, um, I've highlighted it here, they have a live chat so if you click on this tab, I'll show you on the actual website, if you click on contact us, you know, there's a, so right now it's very late in the evening, it's after opening times and they say we're not around but we'll have to talk another time. But typically when you just press this little tab, what opens up is um, a direct chat, okay? And you can see that right now it says contact us and when I took the screenshot earlier it says we're online and you have a little speech bubble. As soon as you click you can talk straight to um, a customer service um, person and they are very nice and they are extremely helpful. I talked to them on the phone many times and sometimes I needed help and they were always very fast and I was very very pleased with them and I'm also extremely pleased by the bundles that are generated because they look professional and that's because they are. Um, and that's because there are a lot of legal firms who are using this, okay? So here there are some of the, um, you know, many, many uh, customers that they have and um, they really, you know, they, they are catering to entire international legal firms and so on. So the bundles that they are generating are accepted around the world and um, very standard and look very neat, okay? All right, so as we're starting with this, um, I have got one request for you, and that is um, you can enter a free trial here. So I would say just uh, click the free trial and you can use this platform for free for 30 days, no strings attached, you can cancel it anytime and it's fine, you know. It's not uh, a sell your soul and lock yourself away forever sort of contract, no. You can literally try it and if you don't like it, that's it. At the end of it, that's that, you know, no problem. But if you sign up for the free trial and you use the promotion code called HORTON, H-O-R-T-O-N 10, HORTON 10, then it will cost you absolutely nothing but I get uh, a referral reward which is 10% of what you pay. So in a sense you are funneling 10% of what you're paying anyway, no extra cost to you, you're funneling, funneling it back to support other victims and support future guides and instruction videos that I'm making. Okay, so I ask you please type Horton 10 into the promotion code, um, here select an email, select a password, and then just click continue, okay? And down here, you can already see that um, they are, you know, the documents that they are supporting, they are supporting Google Docs and also Dropbox and, you know, uh, Microsoft documents and so on. So you, are, you can interface uh, with them and, uh, you know, uh, use all these uh, other cloud storage devices in conjunction with Bundle Docs. But Bundle Docs is specifically to make bundles. And once you log in, it should look something like this, okay? So here, for example, you can see the bundle that I um, have created here. Um, 
And uh, this is the last modification date of when I created this particular incarnation, you know, in uh, July 2017. And this is Dr. Horton versus SIS, which is the same as MI6, um, MI5 and GCHQ, okay? Now, this is my court case, but I would like to show you how to make your own, okay? So if you log in for the first time on your free trial, you will not see this, of course. You will just um, have, you know, the actual um, skeleton, but no um, bundle there. So you just click on New Bundle, okay? And it's super easy. And then you can uh, choose a code and a title. And the first question I had is, what on earth is the code? And in the end, I figured out that this is something that law firms use who have so many bundles, they are drowning in them. And they have some sort of, you know, code with which they identify these bundles, okay? So given that you're not a lawyer, unless you have some sort of arrangement uh, with some other parties um, and you're making the court bundle, Unless there's an agreement about what the bundle code should be, I would say you can. it could be anything you want, okay? So I usually do, I don't know what, 2000, let's say 2018 slash test or something, or slash demo, like it's a demonstration version, you know? Um, so let's do that. And then um, the title uh, in the uh, English jurisdictions would be something like, well, in my case, it's my name, okay? So Dr. Horton and then V for versus, so you're the, the claimant, right? You are the person who's charging somebody else um, with having committed a crime or, you know, claiming that they committed a crime. And then uh, the versus, it's the other party. If you don't know who the other party is yet, don't worry because you can change the title anytime, okay? But you could, I know, I don't know, you could put here, you know, evil secret service, you know, something like that. Uh, or you could put, uh, you know, versus um, CIA, FBI, and, you know, whoever else, you know. So this is the sort of titles that you can choose. Now, I'm going to leave it like that. So Dr. Horton versus CIA and FBI, that's going to be the new bundle here. And then under advanced, uh, you can... Uh, you know, uh, choose different things. Uh, frankly, this is uh, this is really you know stuff that you can leave as it is. So bundle or template, well, just choose bundle. That's fine. Um, make this bundle available to groups. You can uh, you know uh, do that if it's um, if it's unticked. This bundle is private. So let's just make it private. Okay. Uh, make this bundle read only to groups. Yes, you can also choose that. But, um, you know, these options um, are great when you're collaborating with several people. Otherwise, just keep it all private. And then, you know, it's all in your hands. Um, create from a template, a standard template. Uh, you can do that if you like. Um, and I think the, the options are fine as they are. And frankly, they are not even that important, okay? Because the standard setting is fine. And unless you share your bundle with somebody, groups can't access it anyway, you know? So um, you just press create, okay? And then suddenly you have this new, um, you know, bundle generated here. And uh, what I would like to say is, um, you know, this is how it's going to appear. If you have the subscription, so there are different subscriptions for the service. Let me show you. Um, the cheaper subscription is um, just, I'm um, sorry, actually, this is the one that I have booked now. You know, you can see I've got up to 10 bundles, but the, um, the divide is like this. The basic subscription is 10 pounds per month or 10 euros or $10. You know, it's usually 10 in whatever currency. And then you can have one bundle as in one court case. If you are supporting several court cases like I am, you might have the more expensive one, which is two to 10 court cases, you know? Now note, please, that when you have bundles here, two to 10, it does not mean ring binders on bundle docs. They actually mean separate court cases, okay? And that is because you can have different sections within a bundle and they will be your individual ring binders. Okay, so please don't get confused. This is why I made such a big deal out of it. This means court cases, and otherwise we're talking about actual, you know, ring binders. But here, they just mean court cases. So if you go for the absolute um, cheapest thing, that's fine, okay? That's fine. You don't go for this at all unless you're a lawyer, 
or your court expert or whatever. Okay, so forget that. 10 pounds or 10 US dollars, 10 euros is the most um, you have to spend on this per month. Okay, and I tell you, it's totally worth it. So these are the, the pricings. Okay, and then you generate this bundle by just clicking on this big blue button. Okay, there it is. And that will be your court case. And then clicking on it, this is what you see. Okay, now it will say the title over here. Okay, and then you will have these things, which are the different sections. And in legal speaks, they are, um, they are called a tab. So when you have a ring binder, you might have dividers, numbered dividers inside that. And one divider would be a tab. Okay. And the way I'm going to set this up is that the top level tab is going to be your ring binders. Okay, and that's because victim cases are massive because there are so many different crimes incorporated, so many years of targeting, sometimes so many countries. Okay, so we need to give ourselves plenty of space. So what I'm going to suggest is that we make the top level, the top tab to be our ring binders. Okay, so from now on, I will call the top tab the bundle and there will be different bundles. Okay but all will be part of the same single court case. Okay, understood? Right, so let's start. Now, what to call our ring binders? And this is really important because um, when you um, have these court cases, they are massive and so many documents. And if you want to get uh, really nicely organized and neat and tidy, you need a good structure underlying it all. Okay. Now, most uh, jurisdictions leave it up to you how you are organizing yourself, you know, and um, that makes the court cases <laughs> very, uh, you know, individual and so on. Mm, but there's some sort of common sense advice. And for victim cases, I would recommend the following. So this is now specific to the, um, the case of um, targeting victims, um, of secret service um, victims and, and other stuff, military victims and so on, who are part of this, you know, big global genocide that's unfolding. Um, but the same structure can also be used for other court cases. Okay, so here we go. I suggest we all agree on having the following bundles, okay, the following ring binders. The first ring binder should be called core, okay, this will be your core bundle. So the core bundle, okay, that is the ring binder for all the core documents, as in the correspondence with the specific judge and the court, you know, um, your uh, witness um, statement, you know, your particulars of claim, your legal pleadings and all that. This is the core of the court case. Okay, so this is the, the core bundle. Then the next thing that I would like you to have is, of course, the evidence bundle. Okay. And then these are, I, I keep the word bundle in so that you know that it's, a, it's I mean, a ring binder. Okay, these are separate ring binders. Um, but of course, you can drop these, uh, you know, the words and then you have core and evidence and so on. And every single time I'm making these folders, I just click up here. Okay, and then I enter the title. The other one I would like you to have is um, officials and correspondence. Okay. And as you can see, the advanced tab allows me to change the border color, but frankly, I don't really care. So we don't need that. Okay. So officials and correspondence and what goes into officials and correspondence, it, it can also be evidence. So don't get confused. But what I mean specifically is to pull out correspondence with, for example, the police you had with attorney generals, with the UN, with ambassadors and with MPs and all that. Okay. And that is because even though it is part of your evidence, it is interfacing with people and especially officials, you know, who are part of the government outside of your specific court case, you know, of your uh, specific uh, case, you're interfacing with them, but they have a responsibility much far, um, you know, much wider than that. So I want to keep them separate. Okay. So, in other words, oops, um, please ignore the ringing of this uh, telephone that is going to be massively annoying in my office. Okay, so the next um, folders that we should have is um, experts and witnesses. Okay, so experts and witnesses should go in there as well. 
And then you have something like victims. These are the other victim cases. Okay. And then you have references. That is for um, technological references, you know, your, your references bundle. And every single time, you know, you can write references or references bundle and so on. Okay. So it doesn't matter. You can change the title, as you can see, by just clicking on, on this name. And then you can edit it straight away. Okay, but by now you understand what I mean by this, so we don't have to keep writing bundle. And then finally, I would like you to have um, legal authorities. Okay, so what I mean by legal authorities is um, precedent setting cases, previous court cases, other court cases, um, statutes, laws, and they can have many, many, many pages, you know. And when you're reading your pleadings, which should be in, core, in the core bundle, you might want to glance across to the statutes or the laws in another bundle. It makes it very easy for the judge to actually deal with your case because he can have the core bundle in front of him and then have above that in front of him uh, on the table another bundle, you know, your, um, your evidence, for example, the second one, or letters that you have written, or what experts and witnesses have said, and so on, and other victim cases. And then when you're making references to that in your pleadings, which are in the core bundle, you know, he can glance from one folder to the other. If it's all in the same folder, he has to flick back and forth, which is just very annoying and very time consuming, you know. And um, you will learn that it is entirely in your best interest not to annoy judges. And the one big advantage of making your own court case is that you will learn what's massively annoying yourself and avoid that. Okay, so that's that's also another thing. Okay, so this is already step one. And what I would like you to do is when you have generated these um, folders, these tabs or these bundles, you know, these will be our ring binders, press save. So this is the little, you know, um, disk uh, symbol here. And now let me just um, explain the many other um, buttons that you have. So the first one was, of course, generating these new little folders. The second one is to upload documents. So if you press here, you can either drag and drop documents, like PDF documents, and drop them here, or you're pressing this and choose documents to upload, and then you can, you know, select from your downloads. Or you can select from storage devices like Dropbox and others, okay? OneDrive, Google Drive, and so on. And then what you can also set here is when you're uploading documents, you can select in what um, ring binder or what bundle, and then later on what subsection you want to drop these documents off, okay? So um, to give you uh, an, uh, an example, let's go to references, okay? And I would like to um, add some sort of document that I have here. So um, let's say, um, let me go to downloads, you'll see all the junk that I have here. Okay, so there's some sort of, um, you know, uh, yeah, I have uh, some document which um, <laughs> claims to be an intelligence report by German intelligence, okay? So now I can drag and drop it here onto this gray field. Voila. And then once it's uploaded, okay, it's there. It shows you green 100%. You can close this. And then this PDF appears here, okay? If you click on it, I think you have to, is it this one? Yes, you can open it and look into it, what's there. This is just a random report, okay, of the internet, not actually that important. Um, all right, so that you can quote as a reference henceforth. And then this little number that appears on the, um, on the tab um, shows you how many pages it has. So this has 13 pages. If I add another document with, let's say, another six pages, then this will jump, this little number will jump up to 19. So you can always see the total number of pages. And this is important because, for example, the practice directive, as in the guide to um, the courts, that was issued in the UK in 2014 restricts your court bundles to 350 pages. But don't despair because a judge can order that, um, you know, it can be more. And in the victim cases that we're dealing with, 
it's very easily can happen that there are more pages. But I would say worry about that at the very end. At first, drag and drop and dump all your documents in here, and then you can whittle it down later. Okay, now the whittling down is super easy because on this side here, you have a button and you can include it and exclude it. Okay, so this is now excluded and I think that's now included. Okay, this document. And um, you go on and on and on, but of course, as you have references, for example, they'll bit by bit, there will be more and more, and then you want to have some sort of subsections. So what I suggest is then you create another bundle, okay? And you say this um, should be um, maybe directed energy weapons, and it will be all the references with directed energy weapons. So you create it, and then it appears at the bottom. And then you can hover over this, and drag and drop it up like this so it changes the order and now be careful because if you line it here so that um, you know it's to uh, to the furthest to the left as you can get it it will be a top level directory it will become a bundle if you drop it inside like here okay it will become a section within this ring binder within this bundle okay then it will be a tab within the bundle so you can see this if I drag it out it's, um, it's here, it's a top level directory by itself. And if I drag it to the side, it's in there. Okay, so please watch the alignment. Okay, here. Yeah. So one of the things that I could do is I can also change the order. And every single time you change the order, you can see that the numbering is a bit messed up. If you press save, it will automatically adjust the numbering. So I would say what you start doing, okay, and we will play around with this so you, you don't have to, um, you know carve anything into stone it's very easy to change later what I suggest you do is that you create these ring binders you know the top level directories and then you think about you know what other subdirectories you would like to have for example the German intelligence uh, report is sorry about the phone ringing does not fit into um, into directed energy weapons so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another folder and this will be, uh, for example, intelligence uh, reports, or you can call it declassified documents. Okay, so let's create that. Let's drag and drop it up here, and then let's drop this in there. Okay, so then you can open and close it. Okay. And uh, then you can see the 13 pages are on this tab, but not in that tab, and so on, okay? And if you want to drag this document somewhere else, you can just do it and drop it into this one, okay? And then you can see it's in the top level. And then it's very, very easy to, to arrange this, okay? So simple, very simple. And then when you're finished, press save and all the numbering will be corrected. So 6.1, 6.2. And the way I would um, you know, run this ordering is that the top level number is your bundle number okay so bundle one is your core bundle bundle two your evidence bundle and so on and then the next indexing is your tabs within that okay and our cases are so vast you immediately see why you need different tabs because you would have in the references bundle the first tab so the first uh, divider would be directed energy weapons. The second divider might be things like implants, you know, or other technology, body area networks, and so on. Okay, so what I would like you to do as a homework, because um, I also encourage you to actually think about it yourself, is what sort of subdivisions would you like to have? What makes sense, you know, and try to pick the highest level subdirectories, um, you know, for these dividers to, uh, to in catch pretty much everything, encapsulate everything that you want to talk about, but uh, not make it too specific, but also not too general, you know, so that it kind of tells a judge um, a bit about what's the information inside. And then you can think about, okay, what sort of subdivisions do I want to have in my references? So remember, references refers to technical documentation proving the existence of directed energy weapons and satellite technology and body implants and so on, you know. But also things like um, 
statements or press reports about secret service criminality and what those people might have gotten up to, maybe uh, declassified documents about MK Ultra and, and, and. Okay. Now, with the victims, I would recommend that you have victim, uh, you, you make references to other victim cases. So, for example, um, if, if this is not my court case, but it's uh, the court case of, I don't know what, uh, Jane Smith, then she might um, have a, uh, make reference to my victim case and all the evidence that I've uploaded um, to my YouTube channel. And she would say under victims, so other victims, uh, Dr. Catherine Horton, okay, and she would maybe quote, want to quote in court, um, my um, video recordings of the direct LNG weapon attacks, okay? Uh, so you can see I just drag and drop it and then as soon as I press save, it changes it to 5.1, okay? So very easy to do. And then maybe you want to have um, a second um, tab and this would be Dr. Millicent Black because maybe you also have implants and you want to make references to other people who've already proved implants and look carefully now because now you've got three options top level this would make dr millicent black's case um, an entire ring binder in itself but you don't want that if you drag it further down to here oops you have to be careful with the dotted line like uh there then it becomes you know a simple tab, so let me press save, so it becomes 1.1, uh, sorry, 5.1, 5.2. If you grab this and drag it inward, it becomes a subdivision within the first tab, the top level tab, okay? So really watch the actual um, alignment here. I mean, it's fairly obvious, okay, when these um, folders are shifted. And if it's not the right level, you just shift it back like this, you know, and press save um, every single time and then you can see how it's organized. So the homework for you now is to think what sort of victim cases do you want to quote? You know, which ones do you know about, which are very well documented? How do you want to divide your references? What sort of legal authorities would you want to quote? Which, um, you know, say a US code uh, directory that you can put in here or previous court cases and so on. And then also do the same thing with the expert witnesses. So, for example, one FBI whistleblower who talks extensively about the um, uh, the actual attacks uh, that are happening is Gerald um, Sosby. So you might want to create a tab for Gerald Sosby and drag and drop it here under experts, you know, save. And then maybe you already anticipate that you want to put in the affidavit of another person. Um, another person was actually made, um, talked about this is Carl um, Clark. Okay, so I would recommend that you are putting, you know, these experts uh, separately, or maybe you have another division, you know, because Gerald Sosby worked for the FBI, Carl Clark for MI6. Maybe you have so many affidavits from FBI agents that you want to have the top level directory FBI, you know, Carl Clark, I think, worked for MI6, British intelligence like that. And then within each, you can have the subdivisions of Carl um, Clark. Okay. And you drag and drop it into the MI6 folder like so. Okay. So it's within the MI6 folder now. And then you create one for Gerald Sosby. You know, that's another uh, way to do it. And then again, you just drag and drop it in there. Okay. So now you have press save and then you can see the subdivision. So the first one is the bundle, the next one is the, the tab, the divider, and then within the divider you will have different parts, you know, different affidavits, whichever way you want to do it, okay? Sometimes it's more intuitive to um, spread it out by um, referring to different people at the top level or perhaps entire institutions separately. Then within that, I would say that you put these people alphabetic if you have um, alphabetically if you've got several FBI whistleblowers you know so another FBI uh, whistleblower would be I don't know uh, <laughs> Jane Smith say okay so Jane Smith worked for the FBI she's also talking about the targeting you drag and drop it here make sure you don't make it the subfolder of Gerald Sosby okay but this will become obvious as soon as you press save because it has many more digits. So you drag it up one level, oops, like that, save again. And then you can see that the FBI folder here 
if I open and close it, has two people, okay? And then you can make it, um, uh, if you want to make it um, alphabetic, you just swap the order like that, and then you save again. So dragging and dropping the stuff is just so easy, okay, and, and really, really simple to do. But then the real power of this is the following. When you have uh, dragged and dropped all your files, you can very quickly um, include and exclude entire bundles. So it looks like this. Let's say I only need, um, you know, official correspondence and expert witnesses. So by pressing a single button, you can exclude and include stuff. But then you can also generate a bundle. And what this means is that all your documents that will be here will be put into one big PDF that you can download onto a USB stick, take it to the printers, to a copy shop or something like that and have it printed off three or four times. When you have 300 pages, that is the best way to do it, okay? And the other really big advantage of um, bundle docs is that when you're generating the file, it allows you, here for example, so these are all the different um, uh, settings that you can uh, choose and we can go through that, but let's start with page numbering, okay? Because if you look at that folder, uh, sorry, that um, part, you can have consecutive uh, page numbering, and I think this is what you should do. If that's the default, okay, or you restart the page numbering at every section. So if you hover over the little I, it explains restart the page numbering at the beginning of each section. Don't do this, because if you do that, stuff can get nicked, okay? The last couple of pages can always get nicked, and it's uh, hard to spot. Well, it still shows in the index, but I would prefer if you just have consecutive numbering. And then you have other, you know, um, settings here that I don't really use. And then you can choose where you want to put this consecutive numbering. These are big fat numbers. And um, you can choose bottom right or bottom uh, left, you know, or bottom center. I would say bottom right is the standard. Um, or if you think all the pages are numbered bottom right, go for top right. Okay, and most page numberings that are on the original documents will not be top right. So that way do you avoid confusion. And then it makes it very easy to refer to these um, uh, individual um, documents inside your bundle. Okay, so let's just go through all the different settings. The description is the title. You can change it here from, you know, versus CIA to something else, you know, versus InfraGuard or versus whatever, you know. Um, and then the bundle title page, you can actually choose a title page. Um, if you don't choose one, it will just have a very simple and easy to understand default one, that's fine. Um, then you can have a bundle intro document, I don't really use that. You can have watermarking, legal firms tend to do that, um, you know, you don't have to. Annotations, I don't really, um, you know, bother with that. So index pages. Here, I, um, you know, I would say you can read through that and choose what you'd like and you can play around with it. And I think in here, um, I would say use numeric section number. I would, I would do that. So uh, sections are by default called A, B, and C, but I really prefer the numeric one. Okay, so that is um, uh, much better uh, or, you know, however you want to keep it. And then uh, late insertions and so on. Um, that is change late inserts so that they are listed. You know, you can uh, you can use that or maybe you don't use that. It doesn't matter. You can then change the font and the style. I would just leave it as the standard because the actual oh let me close this. Um, <clears throat> the actual font sizes are perfect, very legible. You know, but you can always make it bigger if you like. And then uh, we talked about, oh, section pages. Yes, section pages. Um, I would say include uh, section title pages <clears throat> because then we have chosen to, uh, to have every single section as a separate bundle. And if you have section title pages, what will happen is that you have for every bundle an index automatically generated. Okay, so... Um, you can number section index pages if you like and include them also or if you don't number them they're not included in the numbering they're just title pages you know both is fine 
and um, page numbering we discussed just now and then Bates numbering uh, you can google what that means and that's mostly I think used when you have um, images and stuff like that and walk, watermarking for images so um, I have to look it up again what the Bates numbering was but it was something to do with um, including the actual um, exhibits and so on and different bits and pieces of evidence but this is honestly not mission critical for now so this is it. These are the sections. And once you're happy with it, you just click, click generate. And then you will see this little blue line um, will start running. And as it starts running, um, you know, it generates the, the document. And when it's finished generating, you have to wait for a while. It's not just running once or twice. When it's finished, then it will appear as processing finished. And then you can look at your document here, okay, and what it actually looks like. So you either do that or you press print and then it downloads a PDF document for you automatically. And I would say download it because then, um, you know, in your favorite PDF viewer, you can look at it much, much more easily. So, um, you know, let's make it smaller so that you can see this will be the title page. And this is something uh, that you can stick. Uh, some folders have these transparent uh, pockets on the front. You can slide it straight in there, making it very easy to see what um, court case you're dealing with. So you can uh, you can use the title page for that, or you just throw it away. And this would go, uh, you know, this would be the actual total master file, and this would go into the very first bundle, the core bundle, because it then shows that you have one core bundle, an evidence bundle, officials and correspondence, and so on. And within that, you have these separate tabs, you know. So tab one would be FBI, tab two, MI6 experts, and so on. And, you know, you can see that it's very intuitive. And then what you have to do at the very end when you've printed all these things off <clears throat> is that you look for all these different um, section uh, headings you know um, sorry actually one of the things I realized is that the page numbering wasn't generated so we can go back and we can regenerate it uh, page numbering restart page numbering um, okay prefix page number with section number, we don't want that. So why are this, the page numbers not showing? Oh, I know why they're not showing. Because there are no documents in it. <laughs> Sorry, so I have, where's the document here? I have selected uh, the option that the section pages themselves are not counted towards the page numbers. So the page numbers are just here, the 13 pages of this one PDF, okay? So if you go down into the sixth bundle, you know, um, you will have in the second tab one document included and that will be you know the first document in tab 2 and that will be page 1 to 13 okay so I've included very few pages which is why it looks so sparse but these things you can then put into your separate ring binders so core bundle 1 would go into a separate ring binder section uh, 1 would go into a separate ring binder uh, sorry a separate, separate um, divider within the ring binder, section two would go into the next divider and so on. And you just grab these blocks of paper and put them and file them in at the end. Okay, so this is how it works. But overall, so okay, it looks mostly like empty space, but you get the idea. Now what is super useful is when you um, go down to the actual documents. Okay, so here there's many, many sections with no documents. But let's go to the document here. Okay. So you can see that this is now declassified documents and there's one uh, intelligence report. And then you can see the original document is included here as the PDF and then you can see the page number up there, you know, page number one, page number two, uh, page number three. And this horizontal line is actually part of the original document. It's not part of what um, Bundle Docs prints on. So Bundle Docs only prints on this big number, okay, nothing else. And then you can see that these pages are now consecutively numbered. And the idea is that as you have uh, different pages, or sorry, different documents, you know, the document itself has its individual page numbering, but the overall page numbering will just continue throughout the entire document. Okay, so that's the idea. And the beauty is that you can generate this document. And, you know, I would say always generate it when you're finished and make a backup copy. 
And then if you're going back and you're adding new um, documents to here, let's say I open, I, you know, I say, okay, I want to upload another document. And then you choose a document to upload. And I will, I don't know what, you know, uh, there's uh, so much stuff about um, mind control, you know, so let's include a document about mind control. So let me just show you how you do this. And um, I, I now realized I was very quick because I didn't select where it should upload this document. Um, so this is a, re a, a document with many, many graphics, which is why it's taking so long. Okay. But the beauty is that Bundle Docs itself can handle these large file sizes. And you can include PDFs, Word documents, and you can include um, uh, PDFs, Word documents, and images. Okay. So all of this is, um, is going in. Okay. So now... Um, it actually placed it within the core bundle and I think if I change it to evidence bundle it's not going to change it over there so I've, I've blown it okay so I've already uploaded it to the core bundle section because that was the default and I didn't change it but it doesn't matter because I can just go down and I can grab this document um, you grab it there and then you drag and drop it to references here oops sorry I think you have to open the folder you drag and drop it in there and then you realize hang on I want to have a separate folder for mind control technology you create that you create the folder and you drag and drop it into the folder okay so it's now inside the folder and as you can see there are 114 pages down there okay then you press save um, and then you regenerate the bundle so this is regenerating the bundle and there's the option of just um, downloading and re-downloading an already generated document, okay? So there are all these different versions that you can uh, download as you're generating more um, um, different versions, you can download um, different versions from here. And then you have the option of having it emailed, downloading it or just viewing it and I don't actually know what that is, you know? But anyway, you can ask. And if you've got a question, you just press down here. And that's the beauty of it. And during office hours um, in Ireland, this will pop open and somebody would be there to talk to you. Okay? And it's very quick and very easy. So anyway, we press save. This is, I think, to merge different documents. Okay, or to reset. I Most of the time, I don't use this. You know, so forget this one. The important ones are here, upload, generate, download, save, okay? This is the only thing you need. And then let's just regenerate the bundle. I Once you set the settings, it's all fine. So let's just generate it again. You can see it's generating the bundle here, 25%. Um, so now it has a total of 127 pages, okay? And, and you see how quickly you get a lot of pages by just um, throwing in different documents, you know. So um, <laughs> you understand immediately why you have to use a platform like that because if you had to go through a number, pages 1 to 27 by hand, for three different copies, you would go mad, okay. So here is the document, but let's just press print. So this means it downloads it again. So let's open the new document. This is now the new version. Let me close the old one. And then as you scroll down, you can see that there's the um, intelligence report. There's uh, this and what's, oh, sorry, one of the things I forgot to say. So I here, I wanted to make the point that you've got pages 1 to 13 and pages 1 to, um, you know, um, 123. But then when you go to those uh, pages, I think you can even click and it's hyperlinked. Yes. Did you see that? So I just clicked on the link and the PDF already comes with generated hyperlinks. Isn't that amazing? So when you open this, you know, you can click on that or you can click on this document and it's an actual link. It's a short link. Okay. So here you can see this is a, a reality of psychotronic weapons today um, by Trest Preston T. Bailey. So this is what's in here, you know, um, and you can see that Bundle Docs puts on consecutive numbers. So at the very beginning of the document, it already starts on page 13. Okay, and that's because you have another document here that ends on page 13. 
And depending on what you set, you can make these section title pages to be included or not to be included in the numbering. It doesn't matter. I usually exclude them because they're not actually you know, part of the documents. Now, the other thing is you can see that the title looks really enough. OK, so if I go to the actual, hang on, the big index here at the top, you know, that looks with an underscore and brackets and, you know, I, gosh. So if you just you want to correct that, all you have to do is you go into bundle docs. OK, let's close this. And then where are the documents here? Let's open this. There's the, um, you know, there's this. And then I can just edit it here and make it really nice and maybe um, capitalize it as a title. So BND intelligence report. Um, and maybe, you know, when you have these documents, it really helps if you write 2002, you know, because you'd have so many documents. And then mind control um, here is would be um, mind control technology by Preston Bailey. Okay, like this. And then this is how it's going to appear in the index. And this means that your index will be really nice. It will have BND Intelligence Report, pages 1 to 13, then the Mind Control Technologies by Preston Bailey, you know, and the next pages. And as you're adding documents here in the same uh, section, in the same uh, divider, behind the same divider in the, in the ring binder, you know, in the bundle, um, you can have many, many different parts, okay? So this is how it works. So if you like this and you like the ease with which these bundles can be generated, you know, then I would suggest you go um, and you sign up with Bundle Docs, okay? And uh, you just use it. And I think you can use PayPal and, and credit cards, um, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm not sure about PayPal, but certainly credit cards, international credit cards, the usual ones, you know? So if you like that, it's literally just as easy. And then overall, you can, at the end, when you're finished, you can just see how many pages you have in every single bundle. And you can make sure that you have less than 360. OK, um, so you can also just, um, when you have a PDF file, for example, this, um, say, the really big one was the Bailey Mind Control document. And in PDF, you can always press print. OK, if you want to have just this, um, a certain number of pages and instead of choosing a printer, you can choose Microsoft Print to PDF and then print a subdivision. So let's say just print page five to seven and then you select print. Oops. And then you just select what it should be called. Um, you select, I don't know what, um, Bailey new. And then if I go to, um, oops, barely new, you can see um, it just has pages five to seven, five, six, and seven in, in here. Okay. So this is just how quickly you can make a subsection. And then you only include three pages, you know. And then you can write in the title that this is pages three to seven from the um, document. Usually, I would advise uh, including the entire document, you know, but if you don't, you have to include a fail safe, a fail safe reference how the judge can get hold of the entire document. OK, so in principle, I always say include the entire thing. OK, and this is why I'm saying if we have our cases, there's so much declassified documents and so on going in. You know, you should just ask the judge to be allowed to include um, other more more pages, you know, not just the 350. If you really want to prove the technology and absolutely everything. OK, but that is a minor problem. It really is a minor problem. You can deal with it at the very end. So um, one of the things I wanted to say is that your homework now will be to uh, do all this, sign up. Please use the um, promotion code um, Horton10 if you do so, so that we can uh, use the kickbacks to actually help other victims and uh, you know generate um, income so that we can use it for measuring devices and so on. But then when you've done that, your homework is to think, what do you want your subdivisions to be? So your evidence would be very individual. And with the evidence, I would suggest that um, you think about how you would like to divide it. But my recommendation is that the evidence bundle, we ag all agree and all do it the same way. And I tell you why. 
it's because I've prepared this affidavit draft um, and every section number will be one particular type of crime, you know, and my idea is if we all agree on the section numbering, we can compare victim cases very easily. So my section uh, three will include, say, section three, um, will include housebreaking, all the instances of um, the secret services having, having broken into my house. Section 12 will include information on my evidence on implants. And then if we all agree on the same ordering, then um, we can um, compare and say to judge, look, um, so my victim uh, case, you know, section 12 on housebreaking has four housebreaks where, um, uh, so how instances of housebreaking where they came in and they didn't steal anything of value. It's not a normal burglary. And then you can point to another victim case where again, in, you know, in section uh, three, you will have exactly the same type of evidence and the same with implants and so on. Okay, so I would say with the evidence bundle, maybe stick to the one that's in the affidavit template. Um, but be warned, if you go to my um, website, let's go back to the original page. The affidavit template is not finished yet. I'm on it, okay? I'm on it, but I'm just overwhelmed with the amount of work. Currently, it's linked from the different campaigns, the affidavit collection. I am going to move this to the court cases later, so um, it will be, you know, where the, making the court bundle is. And I'm just saying, right now, it's still just a template, okay? It's not the original. The original will be there. Oops, oh, I've just seen that they've broken the link. Ah, oh, rats. Okay, I can see. I can see what happened here. Um, but here, the original is still there. So, oops. Oh, look at that. Okay, the intelligence agencies have sabotaged my website again because the affidavit template should be here. All right, and you can see just how many months delayed I am. Okay, the final version is not final. Uh, yet, but it will be out soon, okay? So this is because um, there was a takedown operation on us and they, um, Hospital Erasmus in um, Brussels kidnapped Melanie's baby. Then I got involved with other court cases. This is why this is being delayed. And I'm being sh a machine gun to death, literally. So this is why there's the delay. But they are coming out, out soon, the final affidavit template. And when it's finished, um, yeah, they've removed it. This is so annoying. Um, what you will see is one big PDF document. And um, if you all write our personal affidavits in the same structure, the same way, the same ordering, I'm not telling you what to write. I'm just saying that if you have um, instances of this or that, if you put it into the same section uh, numbering, the same section headline numbering, um, you can make your case much more easily um, comparable to other victim cases. Okay, so that was the the entire point of this affidavit template, but it's it's going to be finalized soon, and that will be a subsequent video, and um, it will oops all of this will actually enter this folder here. So it will it will decide how we're going to. Uh, divide up the evidence bundle if you all want to do the same scheme okay so but even if there might be little changes already now you can think about you know what are the, the sections that are important for you and already put them in okay and I would advise um, ordering your evidence bundle not chronologically but thematically exactly for the reason that if you're a victim of the secret services you would be assaulted by so many different ways it's ridiculous okay that's why i'm saying so uh, make it thematic not chronological because if it's chronological you know you would have um, within a few pages a house breaking car sabotage assassination attempt to a chip torture direct LNG weapons a judge a judge's head would just explode however if you split your evidence into directed energy weapon attacks implants and torture with implants and then maybe evidence for housebreaking it's much neater okay so this is why i'm saying make it thematic and within every section make it chronological so your housebreaking would be chronological and so on okay this is what i suggest and as i said this is just my personal recommendation you're free to do um whatever you please um, but I really recommend that we all start using bundle docs because it will make our life much easier. So please remember that you're, um, if you're signing up, if you go to bundle docs and you're signing up, you can click on the free trial, okay? 
type email, password, and type the promotion code Horton10, okay? Then press continue and sign up, okay? So thank you for listening. I hope this helps. And soon there will be more and more information about, you know, how to actually make the, um, generate the content, how to collect evidence, what evidence to put in and so on. So that would be, a, um, you know, uh, future videos. So uh, thank you very much for listening, you know, um, and uh, get going and write up your case and help me stop these crimes. Thank you and bye for now.